Welcome to Mount Calvary. I'm Pastor Will. I'm so thankful to be with you today, whether you're uh, joining us in person or online. Today is a special day. We're celebrating the wonderful Lutheran schools in the area, and today we have some people to present and talk about the, the schools that we're connected to or in relationship or our partnership, and some of our kids go there. Uh, so we're so thankful to have representatives that many wonderful Lutheran schools in our area and to have an education Sunday and also our own preschool, which we've had for over 40 years. So what a wonderful blessing that we have. Uh, we begin our worship with the invocation, so I encourage you to stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord is faithful. He establishes us and guards us against Satan. The Lord is steadfast. It's our hearts to love our neighbors. We can be confident in the Lord. And his love for us. Make any friend of us by our lives. From dark. In our lives, we struggle to follow Jesus' example of love, steadfastness, and faith. We have sown hatred, shown laziness, and known many doubts. We have not kept our eyes fixed on Jesus. Yet our Heavenly Father invites us to draw near to his throne in confidence and to ask for forgiveness. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and actions. Help us to serve in joy and love. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us. Back to you on account of Jesus. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. Received into the certainty and security of eternal kingdom, be assured that you belong to him. He is, his, he is your father and you are his children. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may, you may be seated. We invite Joel Ackridge Ford, who is our Word of Life representative today, to share about Word of Life. Good morning. Uh, I just want to thank you, the church, Pastor Will, uh, that you would set aside a time just to talk about students, about education. Uh, it's very inspiring. It's not typical for churches to set aside a whole Sunday, and so that's not lost on, I'm sure, any of us. So thank you, Pastor Will, and for, for this. Um, you know, I've been at Word of Life for a few years. Uh, I'm there part-time, uh, but my heart is there full-time. Uh, my wife teaches art part-time there, and uh, she's a children's minister in her other life. Uh, and then I have a daughter, Maggie Grace, uh, who's in fifth grade, uh, and we, uh, we are so thankful for Word of Life. We're thankful for Lutheran education. We did not grow up uh, in a Lutheran church, and so we've just, just learned to love and respect uh, Lutheran schools. Um, you know, and when we look at our communities, uh, our cities, counties, state, uh, country, and world, our kids need Jesus-filled education now more than ever. Um, and at Word of Life, we root for and we do pray for our other sister schools uh, that they thrive as they reach more and more kids for Jesus because we need more thriving Christ-centered schools, not less. Um, and each school is unique. It has a unique calling from God. It has unique characteristics, unique blessings. And for Word of Life Lutheran School, we're one of the, the one of last of two uh, that are in the city. Uh, we uh, go K to 8, and then we have two preschools as well. Uh, and much like our city, our school is very diverse. Uh, we have over 13 countries represented within our student body. Uh, but it's not just diverse in that way. It's also socioeconomically, denominationally, and children with special needs. And since the pandemic, we have just become a haven for kids with special needs. And so our diversity is really widespread. But that's one of the blessings. We, we don't see it as a badge that we just promote. We embrace it, and we celebrate it, and we love it. You know, any characteristic you can think of uh, is probably represented in our student body at Word of Life. And that's why so many of our families are there. Uh, they're there to get a robust education, yes, high academic standards, but they're also there because their kids are going to get an education beyond the classroom. They're going to learn and be discipled to love and cherish others that maybe have a completely different background than they do. And, you know, this extends to our parents as well. 
you know, because they're learning uh, from other families that, you know, from different backgrounds. You know, we have some families that uh, come from very affluent parts of our city, and then others that maybe just moved here from Myanmar. Uh, we had a family that moved here uh, two weeks ago, uh, two boys that, uh, that enrolled, and then one of our other families learned about them and helped them with some of their needs. And so uh, just the diversity is one of the beautiful things and the main blessings that we have at Word of Life. And so God's continued to bless our school. You know, we've had record growth in our enrollment this year. Uh, it's been uh, really exciting uh, to welcome all these new families. And through a capital campaign, uh, through individual donors, we have a multi-year renovation going on. Uh, I keep asking them if we could get a soft serve ice cream machine just for the teachers, and they keep saying no, uh, but I'm going to keep asking. Um, and then just lastly, I just ask you to pray for us uh, as we continue to grow just that we not get distracted by growing numbers, but stay focused on growing hearts. Uh, because we're there to tell kids about Jesus and also disciple them to make an amazing impact in our world. Because we know in Matthew 10, 16, it says that we are sheep among wolves. And we have such an opportunity as churches, as families, to go in and get into these kids' lives and to change their lives. To tell them about Jesus so many times for the first time and then also disciple them. And so I also ask that we pray for all of our schools, that we can continue to make an impact as we change this world. Thank you. invite Don Walker Ford from St. Paul's Lutheran School uh, to share about what's going on there in De Pere. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Um, I'm thankful uh, that we're celebrating Lutheran schools today at St. Paul's in De Pere. Our mission is to strengthen the saved by equipping students to serve their neighbor and seek the lost. And our theme this year is Forward in Faith, based on Philippians 1.6. I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. I was asked to share with you today how God is working in our school, and I'm very new to um, St. Paul's de Pere. I just started as the principal there this summer after being in Wisconsin for several years. So it's really been a blessing to come serve at such a wonderful school. I can tell you many ways that I see God's God at work. Um, one thing that I see daily in our teachers um, are people who truly love the students in their classrooms um, and they show God's love to them by creating impactful lessons, interacting with them on the playground and disciplining, disciplining them with Christian care and concern. I recently saw God's love in action at our recent gala where I saw those in attendance generously give of their possessions so we could raise enough money to buy a new school bus. God has certainly blessed our school with generous support. I see God's work in our students. Daily, a different student leads our entire school in pledges, um, and then they share one of their favorite Bible verses and a prayer that they've written on their own. We sit in faith families for chapel, 
and our eighth graders lead their faith families in different activities. It's amazing to see their spiritual maturity. We recently had a faith family chapel event um, where we talked about prayer, and each of our eighth graders led their faith family in modeling younger students how to pray. Just this week, I was in Mrs. Hankey's classroom, and the kindergartners expressed some concern about people who didn't believe in Jesus. And one student wanted to pray for those students who didn't believe in Jesus, so Mrs. Hankey was able to lead them um, in that prayer for how to share God's word with others and to help those people be saved, and I was so thankful I was there to witness that. Finally, when I attend chapel weekly, I see students who are generally invo gen genuinely involved in worship, especially when they sing, and that's not always normal, even when eighth grade students are participating in the actions for the song. So God is, um, love is very alive there. Um, it's a, a school that's flourishing and growing, and I thank you for the opportunity to be here today as we celebrate opportunities for a Lutheran Christian education. Thank you. Our first reading uh, from the Old Testament comes from Psalm 78. It's a psalm that recalls uh, events that actually happened in the books of Exodus and Numbers. He established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers to teach to their children, that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and arise and tell them to their children so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God but keep his commandments, and that they should not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart was not steadfast, whose spirit was not faithful to God. The Ephraimites, though, armed with the bow, turned back on the day of battle. They did not keep God's covenant, but refused to walk according to his law. They forgot his works and the wonders that he had shown them. In the sight of their fathers, he performed wonders in the land of Egypt, in the fields of Zoan. He divided the sea and let them pass through it and made the water stand like a heap. In the daytime, he led them with a cloud and all the night with a fiery light. He split rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink abundantly as from the deep. He made streams come out of the rock and caused waters to flow down like rivers. Yet they sinned still more against him, rebelling against the Most High in the desert. They tested God in their heart by demanding the food they craved. They spoke against God, saying, Can God spread a table in the wilderness? So he struck the rock so that waters gushed out and streams overflowed. Can he also give bread or provide meat for his people? Therefore, when the Lord heard he was full of wrath, a fire was kindled against Jacob. His anger rose against Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading uh, comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, this is Paul writing. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor, and our presentable parts, our unpresentable parts, are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, 
that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. And if one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helping, administrating, and various kinds of tongues. Are all, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles, do all possess, possess gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, but earnestly desire the higher gifts. And I will show you a still more excellent way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand at this time for the reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus returned, the crowd welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. And there came a man named Jairus, who was a ruler of the synagogue. And falling at Jesus' feet, he implored him to come to his house, for he had an only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she was dying. While he was still speaking, someone from the ruler's house came and said, Your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the teacher anymore. But Jesus, on hearing this, answered him, Do not fear, only believe, and she will be well. And when he came to the house, he allowed no one to enter with him except Peter and John and James and the father and mother of the child. And all were weeping and mourning for her, but he said, Do not weep, for she is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him, knowing that she was dead. But taking her by the hand, he called, saying, Child, arise. And her spirit returned, and she got up at once, and he directed that something should be giving, given her to eat. And her parents were amazed, but he charged them to tell no one what had happened. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Our uh, administrative director of our preschool here at Mount Calvary. Thank you. As many of you know, my name is Jen, and I'm the administrative director here at the preschool. Um, I've been in this role for a few years now, um, and you know, it's just been an incredible place to be. Um, our program has continued to grow. Um, this year, we are. We entered the year on a wait list, which has not been something we've done um, in quite a few years, and that has just continued to grow. We have people inquiring for um, next year, two years from now, and so it has just been incredible to see um, that growth happen, and you know, that's primarily thanks to um, our teachers. They are so incredible with the children, and it's such a fun time to get, you know, go in the classrooms and watch the teachers get down on the floor with the children and talk to them and interact with them and teach them while they play. Um, you know, our theme this year is growing with Jesus. Um, and it's just so incredible to watch our children as they continue to grow. And as you can see, you know, our children did um, the lovely leaves on the wall, so unique to each of them. Um, but that's, you know, exactly what our teachers try to do is embrace the uniqueness <laughs> of each child and help them grow in their own personal space. Um, you know, I see the little two-year-olds who are still learning their vocabulary and some of the first things that they do are seeing the songs about Jesus that our teachers have taught them. I see, you know, our older children, our fours and our fives, who are dealing with hard life experiences, and they look to Jesus to help them process those experiences. And just how incredible is that, that they are able to come here into a safe space and learn the love of Jesus. So we're just so thankful for the support of the congregation, so thankful for our teachers, um, and excited to see, you know, where the preschool will go in the future. Thank you. Oh, and now we invite the children forward because our lovely Mrs. Tanya Peter, our light lead threes teacher, is going to do a children's message with them.
Well, good morning, friends. It's so good to be here with you today in God's house. Now, this year at Mount Calvary School, we've been learning about growing with Jesus. So I've been doing some thinking about plants, things that are growing. I brought a couple plants to show you today. Look at this first plant. How's this plant look? Dead. This plant looks dead. This plant is brown. It's all shriveled up. It's not growing. It's crunchy, yes. This plant was sitting on the patio at my house, and it's been really cold outside. So this plant isn't growing anymore, right? This plant is dead. That's good. I'm glad you've been taking care of your plants. Look at this plant. This plant looks very different. This plant is alive. It's green and it's growing. Do you know why this plant looks different? Exactly, Gabriel. Yes, this plant has been in my warm house. It was sitting on a windowsill and we watered it regularly and it's just soaked up the warm sunshine. So this plant is alive and well, it's healthy and it's growing. Now, you know, boys and girls, I'm not a plant, but I am a child of God and I want to keep growing. I want to be strong and healthy and this is how I keep growing. I do it in two different ways. I brought something with me. Yes, I brought the most precious book of all. I brought the Bible. Now the Bible is God's word. And when I read the Bible, I learn so many important things. Most importantly, I learned about when Jesus died on the cross for me to take away all my sins, but he didn't stay dead, right? He rose from the dead on Easter morning. When I read the Bible, I'm reminded of other important things. God is with me all the time, wherever I go. He forgives my sins, and he loves me so very much. Now here at Mount, Pro Mount Calvary Preschool, we read God's word every day. We talk about it in Jesus' time. We sing words from the Bible in our singing time. But you know, boys and girls, you can also read the Bible and grow in God's word at your house with your moms and your dads, your families. You can read after a meal. You can read at bedtime. And every Sunday when we come here to God's house, we get to read God's word with our whole church family. And we can learn so many wonderful, important things. There's another special way that I can grow, grow with Jesus. I've got a picture here. What's going on in this picture? Praying, praying. In this picture, we see a child that is praying. Now, praying, really, all it is is talking to God. You know, boys and girls, your moms and dads love to know what you're thinking, if you're worried about anything. They want to know what's important to you. And our Heavenly Father is just like that. He loves it when we talk to him. He loves it when we share with him what we're thankful for, what we're happy about, if we're scared, if we're lonely, if we're worried about someone who's sick, we can tell him all those things when we pray to him. So here at Mount Calvary, in our school, we pray to God every day. We pray before snacks, we pray before lunch, uh, we pray during Jesus time. We might pray for a friend who is sick or who's traveling. And also, you're right, Gabriel, we can pray before bed. We can pray at home with our families, at mealtime, bedtime, or maybe, maybe before we go on a trip, whatever we want to talk to God about. He's always there listening to us. And we can know that God will always hear and answer our prayers in the way that is best for us. So I want to be like this plant. No, I don't want to be like the dead plant. I want to be like the green, healthy plant that is growing and thriving and living. And it's all because I want to be growing with Jesus by reading his word and by praying to him. 
Now, at Mount Calvary this year, we've been singing a song every day that talks about doing those two special things to grow with Jesus. So if you know this song, could you please help me sing? I know my teachers will help me sing. Okay, it goes like this. I know you know this, Lily. Read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, 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 and you'll grow, 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 and you'll grow, grow, grow. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. So boys and girls, I hope that you keep growing with Jesus by reading that very precious Bible and by praying to him. Okay, you may go back to your seats. Let's pray. Jesus, we are so thankful to be here today. We celebrate the wonderful blessing that you've allowed us to be in St. Louis with so many Lutheran schools, the opportunities we have to care for your children, to love them, to walk alongside them as they go through the ups and downs of life. Lord, to teach them about your love and forgiveness and mercy and to return their spirit to them, Lord, as they know uh, you and the spirit that you have given them and bless them with. Be with us this morning as we hear your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Familiar stories draw us to certain parts of that reading. And today's reading, when we hear the story of Jairus, we are drawn to the healing. And rightfully so, what an amazing truth and what Jesus came to bring in healing this girl who was dying, who was sick, and what Jesus came to do in her life is an awesome part of the story. But I want to just take a a minute to look at other parts of the story that help us to know who Jairus was. Now, when Jesus returned 
the crowd welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. And there came a man named Jairus, who was a ruler of the synagogue. And falling at Jesus' feet, he implored him to come to his house. For he had an only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she was dying. Who was Jairus? Yes, her drawn to the fact that he was a ruler and he was known by the community and that people respected him, but he was also a dad who needed help. And that's where the part of the story helps us today as we focus on education and schools and, and thinking about the children and that Jesus wanted the children to come about him, come to him, that they cared for them. And here we see this dad who needed help. Now, every school in this place and, and our, our, had the opportunity and has the opportunity to speak is answering that call to help parents who need help. It's socially acceptable to ask for help with education since our community and our country says that we will provide that education. They acknowledge that not all parents are fit to be teachers, and therefore we make an effort to provide that for all people. And it gives us an opportunity in the Lutheran community to, to care in a certain way with that socially acceptable request. So people don't show up at our Lutheran schools falling on their feet like Jarius. They show up acknowledging that this is something that's socially acceptable by the community. But make mis no mistake that they have all of this in common with Jarius. They may not get there even while they're in our schools, but eventually those needs come to care for their, their children in their homes, to come to the places where they have questions and, and need answers and need help with their children. How does Jesus help Jairus? But taking by a hand, he called, saying, Child, arise, and her spirit returned. And she got up at once, and he directed that something should be given to her to eat. Her spirit returned. As I prepared for this message, that's what stood out to me, this moment where her spirit returned to her. Every parent gets to this place where the child that they knew, that they, when they came into their family, the great joy that they had, when they saw that child come into their family, something changes about them. Their spirit seems to be different. With, so the sins or struggles in their life have changed them in a way, and their spirit seems to be gone. The spirit they once know that brought such great joy into their household, and they are left with questions. And yet, even the best of children have these moments and these problems, and it's where do they turn? Where do they turn, and where do they seek help to have that spirit return? Our Lutheran schools then have the wonderful opportunity to point children and families back to the Creator, back to knowing who created them and, and who made them to be with all of their gifts and who knows them better than anything. They may not be facing death like the child of Jairus' daughter, but there is death and loss of the child that they knew and help that they are seeking out. The beauty of our Lutheran schools is that we guide them to our Creator. The Creator knows the child better than even the parents. And at that moment, they don't feel lost or they don't wonder what they will be able to do or how to return the spirit, but they receive a new joy, a great hope that they can trust in their creator. They can trust in a God who loves them and wanted a relationship that he sent Jesus to restore that relationship with them. And they receive this hope, the certainty of the love of Jesus to forgive them and desire a relationship with them. There is a problem. In a city saturated with Lutheran schools, we forget that all our Lutheran schools provide hope for the hurting parent. And this hope word, as I've talked about many times at Mount Calvary, gets lost in wishing and waiting, but hope is the certainty that we know that Jesus loved us so much that he would restore his relationship and provide the eternal salvation to be with him forever. And that is what the Lutheran school is gifted to share that our public schools can't. Our public schools still provide help, but not hope. Now, every Lutheran school does this in their own special way. They provide hope, and, but they all provide hope. They care for the different children of different places in all sorts of ways, but they still all provide hope. 
Now, this does not mean that the public school teacher can't provide that hope. They just have a few more challenges in front of them. They must navigate through all the different parts of the public school and what they can and can't do to be able to find that opportunity to provide hope. And it doesn't mean that the parents can't find hope in other directions. They, too, can provide that hope at home. They can share the Word of God and pray with them in all sorts of ways. They also can bring them to the many and the plethora of Lutheran churches that we have in St. Louis to hear that hope. But on this Sunday morning, we acknowledge that the wonderful gift of our schools, our Lutheran Christian schools, is that we get to share that hope We get to watch the kids walk into our doors and be a part of our places and see those moments where they're hurting, where their spirit has gone, and provide them that hope. It's there that we celebrate what it means to be one body together. The joys of all the differences and the uniqueness of each school and how we all celebrate that we can work together. For just as one body, but just as the body is one, has many members, and all the members of the body, though are many, are one body. So it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews are Greeks, slaves are free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. All were made to de- drink of one spirit. Now notice this is the same language that we see with Jairus' daughter, that her spirit is returned to her. So what does it mean to drink of one spirit? We look to other places in Scripture to help us, to guide us into the understanding of drinking of one spirit. And today we hear in our Old Testament psalm, he split rocks in the wilderness and gave them uh, the drink abundantly as from the deep. He made streams come out of the rock and caused waters to flow down like rivers. Our teaching in scripture would lead us back to Exodus 17 where the children were lost in the wilderness. They were on a moment of wondering if they were going to die of thirst and where would they find hope? Where would they find help? And had the Lord just taken them into the wilderness to die? And there at that time Moses hits a rock and the gushing waters come out and they taste all of this together. They gather around and have their, their thirst quenched and their spirit renewed. And they see that they are not left for dead, but they have hope. They know that their God will always provide, and they drink of one spirit. It's our schools and our churches that now combine together to be in that moment, to carry on that same moment where families and people are struggling with the understanding of dying or looking at their own culture and community and wondering where they can find help. They feel like Jairus, even in the place of they may have all sorts of blessings in their life, gifts that they've been given, and there becomes these moments where they wonder if they will survive or how will they go on. And it's here where our schools and our churches gather together to be one, to provide that gift, to teach them about the spirit of our God, the gift of his blessings, and to drink of his word and know the hope that we have in them. The devil gets involved, though. He tries to trick us and get us caught into who's the best and and who has the greatest school and, and who has more kids and all of those things. But we pull away from that this morning. We know that God has blessed St. Louis to be a place with many different schools and many different uh, Lutheran churches and the wonderful gift of that. And I had promised Mount Calvary that we would always celebrate those gifts and work together with many pastors in our area to encourage different churches with the different blessings that they have, the ways that they live out their mission and vision that the Lord has given them and, and be able to reach their communities. And so it's my prayer that we see the wonderful blessings of being in a city with so many schools that provide hope to parents and kids. And I pray that God would eliminate the spirit of competition and replace it with the spirit of cooperation. 
And that's what we are doing today. We are seeing and hearing about those wonderful gifts. We're celebrating those. And we pray for each one of those different schools and churches as they reach different people in different ways because we know that the, because of where they're located or the way they're built or made up, they have different gifts to reach different people and give that hope like Jarius. So like all the fathers and mothers and parents and children who are hurting, may we always give that hope as we hear today in God's word. Let's pray. Jesus, help us to see the wonderful blessings and gifts of our Lutheran schools and churches. Jesus, forgive us for the division in our Lutheran community. Restore us to drink of one spirit and to share your hope with this community. And we use our differences to transform the community together. Amen. We invite now uh, Pastor Reverend Matt Hainer to come forward and share with us about CCLS. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you. I'm uh, Matt Hainer. I serve as executive director of Christ Community Lutheran School. And uh, as we go into 2023, we celebrate 50 years of ministry at CCLS. I was just talking to Sandy before the service, and her son was in the first kindergarten class uh, of CCLS. And uh, I come to you today and celebrate uh, the past with you and thank you for your partnership in the gospel over those many years uh, uh, to take CCLS and to serve all those kids. Uh, CCLS continues to serve uh, children transforming lives through Christ-centered education um, with academic excellence. In our fall um, uh, benchmark assessment, we saw that in most grades and in most subjects, uh, we were outperforming the national average by about a year. So uh, we're, we're pleased to see that our kids, even through the pandemic, have been accelerating and, and serving uh, um, and fulfilling the potential that God's given them. Uh, moreover, uh, we continue to uh, share the gospel with the kids. As Pastor pointed out, it's all about bringing hope. Uh, this uh, week, Wednesday, I have the privilege of baptizing a young fifth grader. Uh, her mom works on the weekends. Her family doesn't get to church much at all. And uh, through the ministry of our teachers, uh, she wants to be baptized. And uh, she's reached out to our teachers, one of our teachers, to be her godparent. And uh, we get to see God give that life-giving hope uh, through baptism on Wednesday. Uh, CCLS continues with the innovative um, spirit that started the association in 1973. Uh, this year we launched the first micro school in the city of St. Louis. This is the first uh, Lutheran school to open in the city of St. Louis since uh, 1954 when Hope opened on the south side. Uh, this is the first time in 50 years that Bethlehem Lutheran Church has a Lutheran school in its building. Uh, serving its kids and that community was really excited to hear that we can talk about Jesus all day long now and we can go to him in prayer and share that hope with their children. A micro school is a, a one-room schoolhouse where you have multiple grades and you leverage technology to provide uh, individual uh, guided instruction um, but uh, just to give you a, a, a taste of what's going on up there uh, I teach a leadership class on Mondays at the, the micro school, just as I do at our campus in Kirkwood. And uh, I always start out with Bible baseball. It's a trivia game, so I can kind of see where the kids are at in terms of their knowledge of the Bible. A single is a really easy question, doubles harder, triples hard, and don't even try to hit a home run. <laughs> but uh, we, we play this game. And the first day I was there, we were playing Bible uh, uh, trivia, and uh, I was looking for singles. And I said, can you give me a miracle of Jesus? And we weren't hitting any singles. And I said, well, Noah built the ark because of a, and we weren't hitting any singles. Um, these children hadn't heard the good news and the hope that Pastor shared with us this morning. So what did we do? We took them through the whole Bible. We took them Genesis to Revelation through the story and just as always, they were just eating up God's word. They were hungry to hear this incredible story of a God who loves them. And uh, the, the gospel really struck me this morning because it was this Monday that I was going through the gospel mark with the kids. We do a chapter a day so they can work on their reading. And one of the, we were on chapter five of Mark, which is the same story in the gospel mark. And as we started to read the story, uh, one of these boys who we've kind of uh, noticed as ADD, attention deficit disorder. Uh, as I started to read the story, he says, 
Isn't this the story where Jesus raises the daughter and says, tell Fakum, little lamb, get up? And I'm like, wow. <laughs> I mean, the way God works with his word. And uh, it just, again, shows that God has his attention on his kids, and he knows how to fill the deficit. And one of the ways God keeps his attention on his children is through Lutheran schools throughout this area and through our country. And through the attention of these incredible serving leaders of teachers that we have in these um, schools, uh, people are learning about the hope, are, are learning about their Savior, and um, their children of God love and saved by Jesus. And uh, if you go up to that micro school today and ask the question, who are you, you'll hear them say in unison, I'm a child of God, loved and saved by Jesus. So again, thank you for your support over the many years and your continued partnership in Lutheran education. Uh, we all really appreciate that. I, I will uh, ask for one call of action this morning so that we can support all Lutheran schools and children and make it accessible and affordable for all kids. There is a new tax credit program through the state of Missouri called the Most Scholar Program. If you haven't heard of it, please go to the Missouri District website you'll see most scholars and look that up. After church, I'll stick around if you have any questions. But it's a dollar for dollar tax credit that every one of us can provide to scholarships for kids to go to Lutheran schools. We have 87 children in the queue waiting for scholarships and we need to fill that um, support to the Missouri District. This isn't a donation, it's a reallocation of your taxes up to 50% of your tax liability to provide scholarships for kids. It'll mean a lot for all these families. And we're talking millions of dollars of scholarships all the way through high school. Uh, Jonathan Butterfield will be talking about Lutheran South. We're talking about scholarships that can, can follow a child from kindergarten all the way to high school. And we need to make that happen. So please check it out on the website, the, the Missouri District website. If you have any questions, I'll be in the back. But again, thank you for your partnership. help uh, different Lutheran churches too. And, and Bethlehem, we support Bethlehem, and that's where that micro school is there and located. So wonderful connections between our churches and schools. We stand now and speak together our, our, the words of faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in one Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven, he sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to us. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, resurrection and life everlasting. Amen. We turn to God in a time of prayer. Lord, specifically, we lift up the teachers, administrators, and students of our Luther, Lutheran schools in the greater St. Louis area. We pray for Abiding Savior Lutheran School, for Christ Community Lutheran School, for Christ Memorial Child Care, for Faith Lutheran Early Childhood Center, for Grace Chapel Lutheran School, Green Park Lutheran School, for Hope Lutheran Early Childhood Center, for Emmanuel Lutheran School Olivet, for Emmanuel Lutheran School St. Charles, for King of Kings Lutheran Preschool, Lord of Life Lutheran Preschool, for Lutheran Association of Special Education, for Lutheran High School South, for Lutheran North Middle and High School, for Mount Calvary Lutheran Preschool, our Savior Lutheran Early Childhood Center in St. Charles, our Savior Lutheran School in Fenton, for Peace Lutheran School Preschool, for Resurrection Lutheran Early Childhood Center, for River Roads Lutheran School, for Salem Lutheran School in Afton, for Salem Lutheran School in Blackjack, for St. John's Lutheran School in Arnold, for St. John's Lutheran School in Ellisville, for St. Mark's Lutheran School, for St. Paul's Lutheran Early Childhood Center, for St. Paul's Lutheran School, for Trinity Lutheran School, for Village Lutheran School, for Word of Life Lutheran School, and for Zion Lutheran School. May you watch over all the teachers, administrators, those working, every kid. May they hear the hope 
that we know in you, Lord, because of your death and resurrection, the gift that you have given in that, may they hear that hope. We pray together the prayer you taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day the daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. We invite Jonathan Butterfield forward to talk about Lutheran South. And then they get to high school, right? The good old days. Uh, but it's true. High school is a, a transformational experience. Kids enter high school as 14-year-old boys and girls and graduate as 18-year-old men and women. And so at Lutheran South, they're transformed through an excellent Christ-centered high school education. We're thankful that Olivia Gorline is enjoying her experience at Lutheran South this year. She's actually with our choir this morning at another congregation. Uh, but for us at Lusa, it begins with the teachers. So what we do is we surround our students with, with men and women who are strong in their Christian character and who are excellent at their craft and they understand their why. But, but even more important than their talent and passion is the message that they get to share with our kids. We have, we have great kids at Lutheran South. They're talented, they're smart, they're kind, uh, they're serving leaders, but they need to be reminded daily of their identity in Christ. Um, you can imagine it's a difficult time to be a teenager. I think uh, data from research suggests it may be the most difficult time in the history of the world. Uh, kids face many challenges today that didn't even exist when most of us went to school, namely social media, uh, the pandemic, uh, recently reminded about concerns for their safety, uh, and then the age-old constant high school temptations to put their identity and their performance and their grades in their ACT score uh, and their performance on a team and their chair in the band and their friend group. And so that's why our daily message at South is to remember who and whose you are. Our students are reminded every day that their identity is secure as a child of God loved and saved by Jesus. That doesn't go away. Two-year-olds need to hear that. 82-year-olds need to hear that. Every day, that's what we remind our kids of, the truth and who they are in, in Christ. They aren't who they think they are. They aren't who their friends say they are. They aren't defined by what they do. They are children of God because God says so. And so it's an exciting time at Lutheran South. Right now, we are enrolling our fourth full freshman class in a row. Uh, we expect to be at capacity next year, which is about 540 students at Lutheran South. Uh, we raised more than $12 million towards the building of a new visual and performing arts center. And so we're just waiting to get the final bids on that final cost before we break ground in the spring. And we have stunning plans to update our current facilities as well. The future is certainly exciting. So thank you for your partnership, for your financial support of your students from here who choose to attend South, uh, for sharing our story, but most importantly for your prayerful support of this critical ministry. I'd love to talk to you more as well uh, in the back after worship today. Thanks for the opportunity. Please stand and receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Ordinary people, extraordinary servants. Now go be one. <laughs>